really believe that our Tower of God and all that the implications of it are the inspiration of Augustine, a man who wrote the city of God that dominated the world for nearly 2,000 years. How many of you have been in the Tower of God? Here is a most intriguing thing from a human point of view. And so many don't even go into it. But that shows the strange offhandness that your generation has. I'm not bawling you out. I, I think some of you are a little afraid of God. But supposing we go in and have a look. There are wonderful windows in this tower. The window by the famous French stained glass window artist, André Roux, and that was specially commissioned for this tower. World famous stained glass artist. Here on this wall, there's the window of the famous scene where Abraham was about to sacrifice his son. And you can see the hand of God coming down and saying, you don't have to do that. And yet, the story of Abraham is that he was willing to do this because of his relationship with God. This window here is uh, a little bit controversial, and this has its origin in the parting of the Red Sea. As you can see the prophet pointing up to the sky, to the hand of judgment coming down, and in here, and you can see the waves coming over them, uh, are Hitler, Stalin, and Mussolini. Modern take on the parting of the Red Sea and those who shouldn't survive didn't survive. <laughs> and from Rome, a piece of uh, the true wood of the cross was presented to Father Murray for the purpose of adding it to the tower. The statue in the middle is called the Laocoon, and this is a Greek statue, probably from around five, six hundred years before Christ. This statue tells the story of the priest. He was the high priest, and his name was Laocoon. And these are his two sons. They are the ones who try to warn the citizens of Troy about the perils of accepting the gift of the wooden horse from Greece. The god of the sea, Poseidon, sent the snakes out of the swamps to destroy him because he interfered with the plans. Laocoon was killed and his, both of his sons were killed. These are uh, thoughts of great thinkers that Father Murray collected over the years. And many of them were at Father Murray's request. He corresponded with world leaders everywhere. He would ask them for a statement in their own words. Though they were powerful in their own life, that they recognized a higher power. Dwight Eisenhower, no man or nation can afford to ignore God. That was his response. John F. Kennedy, these rights we hold from the hands of God. He loved to have his students and challenged his students to come in and read these and ponder them. And this is an amazing one. His quote of Charles Darwin, the grand sequence of events the mind refuses to accept as the result of blind chance. He didn't come out right and say we had a creator, but you could see that even in Darwin there was a struggle. And Father Murray picked up on that. Plato, Adenauer, there's one from Churchill, cousins, you know, they're all there. It's an incredible wall.